Today, we are going to discuss uh, constructivism as a international relations theory. Constructivism. There are many constructivists. Uh, we are confining to one by name Alexander Wendt. Uh, among IR theories, realism is one very popular theory. Liberalism is another popular theory. Uh, these two are most important, but there are others also, like international society, Marxism, Marxism, Marxist theory, international society. Uh, but I found uh, in the context of uh, uh, in the context of India, compared to all other theories, uh, constructivism is very useful in explaining Indian foreign policy. Indian foreign policy. Okay. Um, so I'm going to explain certain important aspects of uh, foreign policy. Uh, in fact, there are uh, two events uh, that shape India's foreign policy. I would say They are Jammu and Kashmir issue and uh, second uh, 1962 war with China. Okay. Our foreign policy is very much influenced by these two. Okay. Uh, I would say the way we looked at them shaped our foreign policy. Okay. Uh, in India, uh, like in other countries, most people use uh, realism to explain. But I always felt there was a problem in explaining Indian foreign policy in terms of realism. Uh, so I found 
this constructivism mm, is a better ex better explainer is better at explaining indian foreign policy so so in this uh, lesson we are going to discuss constructivism What does constructivism says? Constructivism is that uh, we uh, perceive reality uh, or we uh, uh, perceive reality in a particular way. that is to say we construct reality we construct reality reality is not something which is out there reality is not something which is out there reality is not something completely external so it is not that it was out there and external and we we objectively finding out okay so this also not true so um for example as opposed to constructivism something like rationalism rationalism may propose that there is something reality so out there external to us and we are trying to objectively find out this is rationality but constructivism says that reality is a construct is a construct that is we create the reality but it does not mean there is no objectivity but, but it is that the way we look at the world creates the world creates a particular kind of world okay uh, if you want to trace this kind of thinking to a, to its early philosophical source is kant kant's phenomenology is early source uh reality is not out there we shape it construct it okay so uh, this is constructivism uh this constructivism is true of uh, any social reality what we think of caste system is caste system what we think of family is family so what we think of matters so Uh, structure is not out there the way we conceive the ideas we have about the structure the way we interact um create uh reality okay so constructivism um, is a social theory um but how useful it is as a ir theory let us compare this to most popular ir theory realism realism takes international relations 
as actions across states so states are entities in realism and states face what is called anarchy anarchy means there is no one above the states which is regulating the states there is no authority above that is regulating the states states are here and nobody to regulate this is anarchy indians are not living in anarchy because indians are subjected to indian government's control but india is living under anarchy because there is no one that controls india no superior force so states live in live under anarchy unlike members of civil society and because there is nobody to control regulate states fear each other they distrust um fear each other they distrust and because they distrust wars like because uh if they don't take care of themselves taking care of themselves which is called self help if they don't take care of themselves then their survival may be at stake so in a civil society a person is not taking care of himself he has police to depend on he has army to depend on but uh, in states don't have that so they go by self help and they distrust wars are likely so to protect themselves or even to survive they seek power and power comes from two sources economy and military economy and military okay so state seek economic and military power so that they will not lose out in a possible war okay and they think they are secure only when they are more powerful than the other or at least not powerless compared to the other so this is called theory of balance of power balance of power okay so mm, realism proposes states live under anarchy and uh, they have mutual distrust so they seek power so they seek power in such a way that the other will not have more power over them and the power comes from military and economy okay and according to realism this is what the way states are thinking they are thinking because that is what is real anarchy is real threat is real power is really needed to protect oneself so to realism 
this is something real external okay so how do constructivists look at this how does went look at this went would say this is true there are economic differences economy is real military weapons is real but economy and military alone don't define relationship instead the way you see yourself and the other what is your idea of yourself that is your identity and how do you see the other the ego the alter ego and the alter okay so um so one state versus another state how it sees itself uh leads to its identity leads to the way it looks at its interests so identity and interests constitute actions identity and interests constitutes actions which means it is not the physical fact of gnp not the physical fact of military but rather how you see yourself how you see the other what kind of country you are what kind of country you think the other is will determine so when it is not denying anarchy when it is saying that uh, anarchy does not have to automatically lead to power competition or war rather how nations make of anarchy is what in the end the nature of anarchy will be so anarchy is what states make of anarchy is not out there determining the states actions so which means it is not the material factors alone rather how these material factors are seen understood that is what are the ideas associated with these material factors so which means reality is what we construct not that this construction takes place in a vacuum there are certain material factors but the way material factors are perceived constitutes the reality so ideas shared in knowledge shared knowledge 
all these things shape international relations. Okay. So, this is the um, essence. Let us go through Wendt's theory through his words. Okay. He first wrote an article in 1992 titled Anarchy is what states make of it, the social construction of power politics. He said in that article, self-help and power politics are institutions, not essential features of anarchy. Anarchy is what states make of it. By institutions, he means that uh, process that are developed through interactions. They did not come on their own. Okay. Like weather or climate. They are a part of what the state's made of. And this idea of constructivism developed into a major book, Social Theory of International Politics in 1999. Okay. And these are the things he said on ideas. The claim is not that ideas are more important than power and interest or that they are autonomous from power and interest. The claim is rather that power and interest have the effects they do in virtue of the ideas that make them up. Power and interest explanations presuppose ideas and to that extent are not rivals to ideational explanations at all. So he means ideas plus material forces. And the, st the structures of human association are determined primarily by shared ideas rather than material forces. 500 British nuclear weapons are less threatening to the US than five North Korean nuclear weapons because the British are friends and North Koreans are not. So that you are my friend changes the way you look at the military. Next, if the United States and Soviet Union decide that they are no longer enemies, the Cold War is over. It is collective meanings that constitute the structures which organize our actions. Actors acquire identities, relatively stable, role-specific understanding and expectations about self by participating in such collective meaning. So states come to have particular identities and interests revolve around those identities and that is what constructivism is. Identity, what you think you are plus interest, what you want but the interest coming from your identity. Okay. Uh, if you want to, if you imagine yourself as a military power, then you want to pursue this. But on the other hand, if you have a different image of yourself, then you will consider your interests also will be different. So identity plus interests lead to action. Okay. Uh, these identities are created through shared knowledge. Socially shared knowledge is knowledge that is both common and connected between individuals. And what is the definition of constructivism? To Wendt, it is a form of social construction of subjectivity 
which concerns on identities and interests formation. Constructivism is about how identities and interests are formed through subjectivity. Okay. So that is constructivism. And he says when ego and alter. It can be between two individuals or between two states. Um, different kinds of outcomes are possible in their from their first encounter. Um, he explains like this. Realists would probably argue that each should act on the basis of worst case assumptions about the other's intentions justifying such as attitude as prudent in view of the possibility of death from making a mistake. Such a possibility always exists even in civil society. However, society would be impossible if the people made decisions purely on the basis of worst case possibilities. Instead, most decisions are and should be made on the basis of probabilities and these are produced by interactions by what actors do. Interaction rewards actors for holding certain ideas about each other and discourage them from holding other. So, like two individuals, um, two states do not have to automatically and inevitably get into a hostile interaction, fearing each other. The relationship will be based on the perceptions, the pattern of interactions, which means many possibilities exist. So to your realist, uh, survival threat is, the, is, uh, is nearly certain and so states seek power. Whereas to vent, that is not nearly certain, many possible ways of responding exist. So he says, uh, coming to uh, states, they can respond to anarchy in variety of ways. He says there are three major types of anarchy. Hobbesian, Lockean, and Kantian. In Hobbesian, states assume war of all against all. States assume that they are adversaries. And when say such a system existed till 17th century. And in a Lockean type of anarchy, states consider their rivals but recognize the state's right to exist. So one state doesn't try to destroy the other state. So the other state's survival is not threatened. This he says after 17th century. And in the Kantian kind of anarchy, states view each other as friends, settle disputes peacefully, and they support each other in case of threat by a third party. Definitely this Kantian view is, is more relevant to European states after World War II. Wendt thinks that uh, liberal democracies after World War II entered this Kantian type of anarchy. So, um, Wendt is saying that uh, survival threat is not inevitable. War is not inevitable. Um, balance of power is not inevitable for security. 
they are not inevitable does not mean they don't exist they can exist they can come but they don't come uh, independent of your ideas independent of the way you think of your country and the other country and the way you think of your interests which means uh, the way we perceive the world the events and the interests shape international system so to sum up reality is not out there external objective but reality is produced through meaning through subjectivity which means it has many implications conflict is partly your own creation the way you are thinking is producing the conflict okay so we will examine in detail in the context of india's foreign policy uh, our idea of india more particularly our idea of partition partition our idea of jammu and kashmir our idea of 1962 war the way we constructed them created a particular kind of reality is such a reality helpful for us now or not is what we are going to investigate thank you